Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Sony Pro Audio Files. My name is Andy Munitz, Product Manager for Sony's Professional Audio Division. And in this video, we'll go into the operation of our DWX series of digital wireless microphones for ENG use. Before we learn how to set things up, though, just a very quick review of some of the basic features and benefits of our DWX series. Most importantly, it's a wireless mic setup that uses a complete digital transmission scheme. Even though it uses the same channels as our UWPD series and can coexist in the same environment as them, the DWX series actually sends packetized digital data and offers unparalleled sound quality equal to 48K 24-bit, or as we like to think of it, the same as plugging in a mic with a cable. The system offers true double tuner diversity for providing the maximum in signal stability and reliability, and also provides for a direct integration with Sony's own line of shoulder style camcorders, providing for a direct AES EBU digital audio connection with the camera through its slot in mounting architecture. This means that the audio path follows a single A to D converter in the transmitter stays digital as it gets sent to the receiver and becomes part of the video file, goes through post-production digitally, and can even make it all the way to the home TV receiver before it gets turned back into analog for the first time through the TV's D to A converter. This really helps keep the audio sounding pure. As well, because of the tight integration with our line of Sony shoulder cams, Monitoring of the wireless microphone system can even be done through the viewfinder of the camera. Perhaps the most interesting feature of our DWX wireless microphone series, though, is the ability to remotely control the talents transmitter from the camera from up to about 30 feet away via a dedicated special 2.4 gigahertz cross remote signal. This allows for monitoring and control of the audio, including the transmitter settings, right from the camera position, which is especially important when the camera operator is also the audio engineer. For those of you that already have this system, though, the most important thing for you to know is how to quickly pair up the transmitter and receiver, something you'll have to do only once, by the way, and then how to quickly scan for the best available channel at your current location. So here are some very quick shortcuts of operation that you might not already know to perform these functions. First, let's just look at the layout of both the slot-in receiver and the transmitter. On the transmitter, the body pack in this case, there's a set button on the left and a plus and minus or up-down button on the right of the OLED display. These buttons will allow you to navigate through the menus should you need to. On the slot-in receiver, notice that we have a menu button on the upper left with a set button right below that, and also a plus and minus or up-down button on the right of the display. Also on the lower top surface of the unit are a power switch for both channel one and channel two. So let's actually pair this transmitter to channel one of the receiver using the cross remote function. To pair the two units up, think of it as something like when you might do Bluetooth pairing. Start by simply powering on your transmitter while holding down the minus button. This will make the transmitter discoverable by the receiver. The unit will then show scanning on the OLED display. On the slot in receiver, pick either channel, in this case channel one, and power it up also while holding down the minus button. It will then search for any discoverable transmitters and will quickly begin flashing the name of the transmitter it just found. By the way, initially the transmitter name will just be a model name with code, but you can change this to show a talent's name, for example, or simply body pack ENG, as we have here. Next, hit the set button on the receiver to select that unit, and the two devices will then begin sharing information, confirming their metadata link, and soon the receiver will flash pairing done, that's it for the pairing step. Although you can go far deeper into the menus of these units to accomplish this pairing procedure, this shortcut method is by far the easiest and quickest. And to confirm that the two units are paired, look for the double arrows or cross remote indicator, 
along with a three-segment bar graph meter showing the strength of this metadata control signal. And don't forget, this procedure only needs to be done once. Even if you power off and on the units, they will remain paired. And if you have a second transmitter, it can be paired to the receiver's second channel as well through the same procedure. To get the optimum performance from your DWX wireless system, every time you shoot at a new location, you should consider doing a clear channel scan. And there's a simple shortcut for this procedure as well. With the transmitter still on, simply power down the receiver channel you want to use and power it back up, but now this time while holding down the plus button. The unit will then scan for the channels in the group you've assigned. Once the receiver scan finds the best channel, it will flash it at you. To select it, just hit the set button on the receiver. It will then ask if you want to send that group and channel selection to the transmitter. Hit either the plus or minus button to change the display to yes, hit set, and it will say complete when it's finished setting the transmitter to your selected channel. That's it. If you have a second transmitter, just repeat the process with channel two. By the way, if you're using only a single channel, you could use group 00 for the widest possible scan, and this will take about 30 seconds to complete looking through its 188 available frequencies. You might also set the receiver to group D9 for a quicker scan of a subset of 48 compatible frequencies in your selected channel block for all DWX system multi-channel use, which should take only about 8 seconds to scan. To change the group or manually change the TV or microphone channel, by the way, when on the RX or receiver screen, just hold down the set button for about two seconds and then use the up-down buttons to change the value. And then the set button again for TV and mic channel and then the set button again to lock in your choice. If you have two transmitters and want to use both channels of the receiver, you might want to make sure that they are both set to group D9. Now, if you want to go a bit deeper into controlling the transmitter from the receiver, notice that on the receiver, you can change the display to show different top menu views by hitting the menu button. In this case, we'll start by looking at RX1 or receiver one. We can see an audio level meter, the QL or bitstream quality level of our transmission, and the relative strength of both the A and B tuner sections. By the way, it's good if the A and B indicators are flashing back and forth, as that shows the diversity tuner selection function is working. The group number is next, UHF TV station number, and the wireless mic channel, as seen here. Using the up-down buttons, we can see and even choose to change the selection of the three frequency blocks available to us either TV 30 through 33, 34 through 36, or 38 through 41. By the way, if you'd like more information on channels and groups, we have another video posted that goes more deeply into this topic. Following that is an active channel scan function, which will scan for existing channels in use with other DWX systems. Next is clear channel scan, We've seen that we can do a simple shortcut to this function, though, as discussed above. We follow that with an RF squelch setting for only a very specialized application when a second DWX transmitter is close by but on the same frequency. The ability to set up an encrypted secure transmission and a specific system delay readout only for when using the receiver optionally mounted outside of the camera's slot. Hitting the menu button again will bring up the TX1 or transmitter control menu for channel one. Scrolling through the submenus for the transmitter will give us the ability to see and remotely choose the power output level of the transmitter, either one, 10, or 50 milliwatts. Simply hold down the set button for a couple of seconds to activate this menu choice, and then hit the set button to send your selection over to the paired transmitter. Following this is a menu for changing the microphone input attenuation and a menu that allows for changing the LCF or low cut frequency filter in 15 different steps 
to help reduce wind, rumble, or other background noise. Both of these settings can have a valuable impact on the sound and quality of your signal, so have a chance to listen to these choices and experiment a bit. Next up is Power Save. This setting allows for remotely putting the transmitter into a low power sleep mode, allowing you to save batteries during a production break, for example. Very handy so you don't have to dig into talent's clothing for when taking a lunch break. The next menu shows the transmitter's count up battery timer. When you install new batteries in the transmitter, go to its time menu and reset it to zero. And then you'll have an accurate readout on the receiver of how long the transmitter's been turned on. After this, we see a 48 volt function for remotely turning on phantom power for the DWX series plug-on transmitter. If you're using a stick mic that needs phantom power, this can remotely turn on that setting. The RF remote submenu is up next, and it will toggle on and off the cross remote feature, as well as setting up of the pairing procedure. As we've seen earlier though, you have a shortcut for the cross remote pairing function that prevents having to navigate to this menu to set things up. And finally, continuing to scroll through the menu button will change the main display readout next to RX2, or the second receiver channel, and TX2, or transmitter 2, if these are both turned on and active. Following this is a display that gives a quick readout of both channels 1 and 2 at the same time, showing the audio level for both, the digital quality of the bitstream, the battery life icon of the associated transmitter, and an RF meter for each of the A and B tuner sections for each channel. Well, that's about it. Again, the shortcuts mentioned earlier in this video will likely be the ones that will get you set up and going quickly. And the shortcut for channel scanning, specifically, will likely be the one you use fairly regularly. And even though it's good to know what the other controls and menus do on these units, you might not need to access them very often. Hopefully you found this short video helpful in operating your DWX series ENG wireless kit. If you'd like more information on these or any of our other Sony professional audio products, please contact your Sony account manager or one of our Sony professional audio dealers or visit us at sony.com/proaudio. And thanks for watching.